Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today. On the morning of October 7th at 6.30 a.m., I awoke to the high-pitched scream of air raid sirens. I jumped out of bed and ran into the hallway of my hotel in Ashdod, Israel, 10 miles from Gaza. Guests were sprinting to the hallway and the stairwell, and I followed them. Israel was under attack. I had just arrived the day before, bringing with me 24 senior law enforcement officers, police chiefs from Nassau, from Suffolk, Westchester, Rockland, and New York City, so from all of your districts. Over the next three hours, we would be in and out of bomb shelters more than 20 times. 32 hours later, we were evacuated out of Israel to Dubai and back to, to New York, but clearly we were the lucky ones. I lead the Community Security Initiative, or CSI, which is a comprehensive program to protect and enhance the security for all Jewish communities and institutions from Montauk to Albany. We've got a team of 18 professionals to protect 1.7 million Jews, 2,600 institutions, the largest Jewish population outside the state of Israel. The community security's mission to enhance security is in seven primary ways. Number one, coordinating with local law enforcement to protect Jewish institutions. Number two, tracking threats to the community in the deep and the dark web via threat intelligence analysts. Number three, responding to anti-Semitic incidents in our region. Number four, enhancing the physical security of every institution in the region. Number five, providing synagogues, schools, JCCs, and camp staff active threat training. Number six, providing security assessments to enable applications for federal and state grants. And number seven, supplying a real-time communication system that links the Jewish institutions in our region as part of an emergency communication system. Little did we realize that when we left Israel, we were getting out of the frying pan and stepping into the fire. Since October 7th in New York, we have been dealing with a Category 5 storm of anti-Semitism. Bomb threats to New York institutions. Since 10-7, Jewish institutions have received over 140 bomb threats. Protests since 10-7. CSI has monitored over 300 anti-Israel protests in New York State. These protests include calls for the annihilation of the State of Israel, anti-Semitic rhetoric, support for Hamas and Hezbollah, and in some cases have led to violence and vandalism. While the number of protests each day has decreased recently, the protests themselves have become more aggressive. And if you don't think that the anti-Israel protests are anti-Jewish, come to one. You'll see. And that brings us to anti-Semitic incidents. According to the NYPD hate crimes data, which is what we have the most up-to-date up information for, anti-Semitic hate crimes in 2023 increased by 24%. That in 2022 was a historic all-time record. And by the way, anti-Jewish hate crimes dominate. The Jewish population of New York City represents about one-eighth of the total population. Why should it be that this population is on the, res the receiving end, as Mark said, disproportionately, of almost 50% of all the hate crimes in New York City, 48.6 to be precise. So that's the situation. Um, what, is it, what is the ask of you, our elected officials? Two things. Number one, continue to speak out against anti-Semitism. And I thank you all for that. And I think you deserve a round of applause. <laughs> we don't take that lightly. And number two, something more practical, go to bat for New York State and Washington, D.C. The federal nonprofit security grants issued by FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security allow synagogues, churches, mosques, schools, and community centers to put in new doors, blast-resistant windows, CCTV camera systems, and pay for security guards. In 2022, when the total pot nationally was $250 million, New York State won 18%, or $47 million. However, last year, 2023, 
When the total pot increased from 250 to 305 million, New York State's share fell by a third to 12 percent, or only 38 million. How could that have happened? Clearly, hate hasn't declined in New York. In the year after, a racially motivated white supremacist slaughtered black New Yorkers in a Buffalo supermarket for no other reason than they were black. The funds got cut. We need you to help you protect minority, ethnic, and religious groups in New York by pushing for New York to get its appropriate share of this important program. There should be no hate in New York State. Thank you very much.